Section 7.3 is about function operations. When we talk about operations, we mean multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. And we're going to introduce a new operation today that is uh, special and only significant with uh, functions. Before we talk about function operations, we need to kind of revisit what function notation is. And when we talk about function notation, we mean y is a function of x. So usually we will write you know, an equation like y equals 2x plus 3. But when we talk about function notation, we're looking at y as a function of x. So this is a function of x. y is a function of x. So we would say f of x equals 2x plus 3. This is function notation. So what this means is that normally I would plug in a value for x and get a y out. So that's exactly what this is saying. It's saying y is a function of x. When I plug in a value for x, I get a y out. So instead of having, uh, when I say like x equals 3, and I'll plug it in to get y equals 2 times 3 plus 3. So I would say y equals 6 plus 3, which is 9. I can do the same thing for this, but instead of writing x equals 3, I would say f of 3. This means I'm plugging in 3 for x. So it's even more uh, intuitive to do it this way. So I plug in 3 for x, I would do 2 times 3 plus 3, and I would say that f of 3 equals 9. Both of these are the same thing, but the f of 3 equals 9 is, uh, is the function notation. And f of x equals 2x plus 3 is function notation. We're going to be using function notation when we talk about these operations. So throughout each one of these examples of operations, we're going to use the same two functions, f of x equals 3x plus 2, and g of x equals x plus 1. The g of x is just another function. It's just another way to label a function. I can use any variable. I could use h, f, g, a, b. It doesn't matter. It's just like I'm using, I'm, I'm defining g of x as another function. So the first um, operation is addition. And this is something you've dealt with before, just not maybe in function notation. So we have f of x plus g of x. I know what f of x equals, I know what g of x equals. So I'm just going to add those two together. So I do f of x, which is 3x plus 2, plus x plus 1. And in this case, you don't need to put the second function in parentheses. I don't need to put g of x in parentheses. But it's a good habit to get into because although addition and multiplication are commutative, subtraction is not. So it's always just a good habit to get into to make sure you put this second one in parentheses. So we got 3x, um, I'm sorry, we got 3x plus x, so that's 4x. And we have 2 plus 1, so that's plus 3. So in this case, h of x would equal 4x plus 3. So my new function, when I add f of x and g of x together, is f of x plus 3. The next example was subtraction. Again, just make sure you do them in the right order, because subtraction order matters. We're going to do h of x equals f of x minus g of x. So I'm going to use the same two functions, 3 of, 3x plus 2 and x plus 1. So at first I do 3x plus 2 minus x plus 1. And here's where the parentheses come in. So I'll make sure I distribute this negative. And when I collect like terms, I get 2x plus 1. That is subtraction. These are pretty straightforward. So next I'm going to show multiplication. And multiplication is something that we have done before. And there's a different, there's two different ways that it, you can see this. You can see this as f of x times g of x, or you can see it as f times g of x. Both of these mean the same thing. So you can see this either way, uh, both of these mean the same thing. I'm still keeping my same f of x and g of x. So my f of x is 3x plus 2. And I'm multiplying that times g of x, which is x plus 1. And this, again, is something you've done before. You distribute or uh, will foil. So I do first, get 3x squared. Outside, get 3x. 
inside get 2x, last I get 2. So my final answer is 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. That is f of x times g of x. Next operation we're going to look at is division. Again, just like subtraction, division, um, you have to watch the order. So here I have f of x divided by g of x, or I can show it as f over g of x. Both of these, again, mean the same thing. So I've got my f of x, which is, which is 3x plus 2. And I'm dividing that by my g of x, which is x plus 1. Now there really is uh, no way I can simplify this. This is just um, 3x plus 2 over x plus 1. That is the answer. Sometimes you will get a problem where you'll have to factor and cancel. Like say, for instance, I had x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. If I was dividing this, then I would see if I could factor and cancel, which I can. This is a difference of two squares. It's supposed to be x plus 1, x minus 1 over x plus 1. These x plus 1 would cancel, and my final answer would just be x minus 1. So it just depends on the type of problem you get. In this case, our example with 3x plus 2 and x plus 1 can't be simplified any further, so this is the answer. Just keep in mind that sometimes you will have to factor and cancel uh, when you're dividing. All right, so before I introduce the new type of operation, let's look at um, something we've talked about but we haven't really identified, and that is a power function. So power functions are the form y equals ax to the b power, uh, where a is a real number and b can be a rational number. So we've dealt with functions like this in the past, where if b was 1, 2, 3, or 4, or basically a whole number, um, then we had our polynomial functions, like linears and quadratics and cubics and so on and so forth. But now we're dealing with other, other um, functions where we have maybe x to the negative 2 power or x to the 1 half power, uh, which we should all know this would be y equals 2 times the square root of x. So uh, these are just new types of functions that we're going to see. We'll be doing operations with these functions. Uh, this is just another thing. So add this to your list of tools with functions. The last operation we're going to talk about is function composition. And this one is, is the one that's kind of hard to, to grasp, but it's exactly what it means. You have one function composed of another. So if I have, this is red, f of g of x. Think of each one of these parentheses as an of. So just like I read, the, read before, f of x, this is f of g of x. And what this means is that I'm going to take the entire function g of x and plug it in for every x in my first equation. And you can do these both ways. So I have f of g of x or g of f of x. Now these aren't the same thing. This is just notation that you might see. So just like addition, I'm sorry, just like subtraction and division, uh, function composition, it matters which one comes first. And with function composition, you always work from the inside out. You always do the inner parenthesis first, and then you work out. So let's do f of g of x first. <clears throat> so I'm basically looking at f of g of x. Well, g of x in this case is x plus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in x plus 1. So this just means that I'm taking x plus 1, the entire quantity, and plugging in every time I have an x in my original equation. So I'm going to write 3. And where I have this x, I'm going to plug in my quantity, x plus 1 plus 2. Now I'll just evaluate. This becomes 3x plus 3 plus 2. So my final answer is 3x plus 5. So 3x plus 5 is my h of x, which in this case is f of g of x. Now I can also go the other way. So let's do it in a different color. I can do g of f of x. And all this means is that I'm taking the entire function f of x, so 3x plus 2, 
and I'm going to plug that in for every x in my second equation. So this is going to be h of x again. This is a different h of x. h of x equals, and this time I just have a straight x. So it's just 3x plus 2 and then my plus 1 hanging out to the side here. So 3x plus 3. That is g of f of x. So as you can see, you don't get the same answer. So let's do a couple examples with uh, function composition. All right, so we have our two functions. We have f of x equals 4x to the negative 5, and g of x equals x to the 3 fourths. So we're just going to go through a couple examples. It asks us to find f of g of x. So f of g of x equals f of, and I'm just taking the entire function g of x, which in this case is x to the 3 fourths. So this means I'm going to, every single place I have an x in my original equation, I'm going to plug in x to the 3 fourths power. Just like if I was taking f of 3, every place I had a 3, every, I'm sorry, every place I had an x, I would plug in a 3. Well, instead, every time I have an x, I'm going to plug in this x to the 3 fourths. So this f of g of x equals 4, and here's my x, so I'm going to plug in x to the 3 fourths, and that entire thing is raised to the negative fifth power. So here I have a power rule, so I'll multiply exponents, so 3 fourths times negative 5 would be negative 15 fourths. So then I apply my negative exponent rule, and this becomes 4 over x to the 15 fourths. And that's my final answer. Now this might look a little crazy, but f of f of x just means I take f of x and plug it back into itself. So this just means I take f of the entire f of x function, 4x to the negative fifth. So every place there's an x, I'm going to plug in 4x to the negative fifth. So I have 4 times 4x to the negative fifth, all raised to the negative fifth power. Oh no. Alright, so I'm going to apply the power rule. So this becomes 4 times 4 to the negative fifth times x to the positive 25th power. And here I can do a couple things. Um, I can these have the same base, and this is technically a 1. So when I multiply, I would add exponents. So this will become 4 to the negative 4th times x to the 25th, which just becomes x to the 25th over 4 to the 4th, which is x to the 25th over, and I'm not even for sure what 4 to the 4th is. I need to get in my calculator. 4 to the 3rd is 64. 64 times 4 is 256. I should have known that. So there's your final answer. Alright, so in the next video we're going to look at using function composition in the real world. I'm going to show you an example that I like because I use it all the time when I do my Dillard's shopping spree sales. And um, you can actually apply this when you go shopping.